But with the recent advent of a flock of tools and functions like the remove tool, the generator fill, and even the content aware fill, it seems as though the clone stem tool is becoming obsolete or has become obsolete. What do you think? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you five reasons why Granddaddy still has gain. In other words, why the clone stem tool still is very, very relevant and in many cases even better than all of these other tools. So without any further ado, let's get started. Reason 1. Removing attached objects like this painting at the back is always a challenge with all of the tools except the clone stem tool. So how do you do that? If you use the remove tool and try to do it by just painting over the painting, that's funny, and try to do any of that, let me do a quick demonstration, the edges will get compromised no matter what. And it takes a while. As you can see, the edges are terrible. Even if you were precise, unlike me, it would have still messed up the edges. With the clone stamp tool, it is easier than ever. First of all, let's pick the quick selection tool, make a selection of the hat or the dividing area. Now let's invert the selection. How do we do that? Press Ctrl Shift I, Command Shift I, so that whatever removing we do will be limited to that selection. So let's pick the clone stamp tool right here. And you want to make sure that sample current and below is selected create a new layer and just break it. How are we breaking it? We hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and just paint. Now, since we have a selection, it is not leaking outside of it. Take a sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click and paint. Let's take a sample from here as well. Just take a sample and paint. Now, once it is broken, it becomes much easier to conquer. Who knows it better than politicians? Now, you can use the Remove tool and then you can just remove it all at once. You can also use the patch tool up to you, but now it won't be an issue. By the way, nothing is happening. You know why? Because sample all layers is turned off and it will create a terrible filling. So let's hit cancel for now. You want to make sure sample all layers is checked. Little mistakes like this, I don't want to edit that out so that when you face them, you don't have to go through those. So anyway, there you go. That looks amazing. Now a little bit strokes here and there and the painting is beautifully removed. Now keep in mind remove tool is a bit slow but that's reason number one. Reason two, removing halos. Sometimes you want to fill an area with a particular other thing on purpose. So in this case as you can see I have made a mask. This was the original image. I have created a mask and changed the background to black. As you can see there's a lot of halo around the beard. So how do we take care of that? First of all we create a layer at the top by selecting the topmost layer and then clicking on the plus button right there. Then we choose the clone stamp tool and only clone stamp tool can do this. And that is fill up these areas. Now, if we hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and then we paint, those areas get filled. But we want to limit the filling to the mask. How do we do that? We hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers. It creates a clipping mask. So whatever you do right here will be limited to it. Now you can take a sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and just paint. There you go. The halos are beautifully gone and it looks fantastic. Let's do this area. Let's do this area. There you go. Perfectly done this area as well. You can do the same in the hair areas as well. As you can see, there are some halos here and there. So we can hold the Alt key or the Option key again, click to take a sample and just fill up this area. There we go. Nicely. Now you're smart. I believe in you. You can take the time to do the entire thing. One more essential area. As you can see, there's a lot of blur, a lot of halo right here. So you want some hair texture in there. Similarly, click to take a sample and just fill up this area. It's nothing difficult. And there's going to be some areas where you would have to paint with a brush. But for the most part, Clone Stem 2 does it for you. So all in all, when you want to purposely fill an area with a particular other specific area, only Clone Stem 2 can save you. Reason 3. It works across documents. What do we mean by that? Well, here we have a subject and here we have a backdrop. Both are different documents. If you hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample. Yes, you can paint right here. Also, you want to make sure that you set the blend mode to normal. I forgot for the first two examples, but it didn't matter much because blend modes don't interact when you're working on a separate layer. In this case, let's make a selection of the subject. Let us pick any of these three tools and at the top you'll see select subject. Click on it and it does an okay selection of the subject. It's perfectly fine in this case. Now let's invert the selection by pressing Ctrl Shift I, Command Shift I. Now let's create a new layer by clicking on this button. Now, we'll fill that area with the new backdrop, right? So let's go to the backdrop. Let's sample one edge with the clone stamp tool. Let's make it larger. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click to take a sample from right here. Let's get back to it. And let's start from right here. And right about here, we reach the edge. 
so let's not focus on that area. There you go, this is fine. Now for the rest of the areas, let's sample from this side. And now let's paint from right here, that's fine, that looks okay. Let's make the brush larger so it's softer. You can take a sample from right here and fill that area up, not a big deal, and there you have it. Now, press Ctrl or Command D. The edges wouldn't be as great, so how do you make it great? It's already great, it's not an issue, so just change the blend mode from normal to overlay. There you go. All of the hair shows up, everything is perfectly fine, even the grain shows up, and it looks brilliant. Now, this is not how I would do it, but there you go. Just keep in mind that clone stamp tool works across documents. If you have other use cases of this in mind, let us talk about it in the comments. Reason 4. The clone stamp tool works brilliantly with blend modes. So in this case, as you can see, there is a hole in the head which we want to fill up with hair. And how do we do that? We select the background layer and then press Ctrl or Command J. And why are we not creating a blank new layer? Because blend modes only work when you are painting on the image. So just as a backup, we are making a copy. If we had created a blank new layer, and no matter what blend mode you chose, it wouldn't matter. It would just paint as if you chose the normal blend mode. All right. So that is why we just made a copy and we are painting on the image. Now, what would the hair do to this area? It will only darken that area. So if you paint it with the normal blend mode, so let's take a sample of this area by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample. And if you paint, it is just simply a copy and paste in a brush. And that's what the Clone Stamp tool is. It's also painting the skin in here. What we want to do, we want to darken this area only with hair. Now keep in mind, underline the word darken. So change the blend mode from normal to darken. And once we do that, if we take a sample from right here by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample. I'm tired of repeating that. See, only the dark hair is being painted. It's not painting the skin. It's not brightening the area. It's only darkening the area with hair. Let's take a sample of this area and just paint that. Or maybe this area would be more apt. There you go. So naturally, it's only filling that particular area and nothing else. So when you have the darkened blend mode selected, it only paints when the target area is brighter than the sampled area. So you sample the hair, which is mostly dark, and you paint it on the bright skin, so it paints. The opposite won't happen. So if we sampled a bright area like this, and tried to paint on this dark area, nothing would happen because the darkened blend mode is selected. The opposite would happen with the lightened blend mode. Either way, it just is very interesting. Let me share with you one more trick with the lightened blend mode. So let's say you want to give the beard a nice shape. So I already had made a selection like this. Now, we want to add some feather to the selection. So let's go to Select, Modify, and Feather. About 16 is fine, hit OK. Now, if we painted with the normal blend mode, see what happens. So with the Clone Stamp tool selected, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample. And if we paint it like this, this would look cartoonish. Take a look at the texture right here. It's just not looking realistic. Take a look right here. Let's press Ctrl or Command D. Look at this area. It looks so darn flat. We didn't want to replace the whole thing. We just wanted to paint over the dark hair. In other words, we just wanted to lighten the dark hair. We just wanted to paint over the areas which are darker than the skin or darker than the sampled area. In this case, it is the hair. Now when you choose the light and blend mode, it will only paint when the target area or the area where you're painting is darker than the sampled area. So in this case, if we sample the skin, and paint over the beard, it will only replace the beard, mostly. So let's take a sample, there you go. The texture is still intact, everything else is still intact, and it's looking so much more realistic. There you go. Similarly, if we paint right here, see? At each place, the texture is still intact. There you are. Now you can do the rest, but take a look at this. Let's press Ctrl or Command D. Now we have a nice shape to the beard. Reason 5. You can modify the clone source with the clone stamp tool. So in this case, let's say you want to remove the chain. No matter what you use, maybe generative fill as an exception, but then again, it's resolution capped. Whatever you use, it will not connect well. So let's choose the remove tool first to do most of the heavy lifting, and then we will fix it with the clone stamp tool. So let's remove this chain right here. Now as you can see, it mostly did a good job. There's a weird line right here. We'll try to paint over it one more time. Well, we can work with that, but still, 
Have a look at this line, it's not connected well. Even if we try to paint here with the remove tool, it gets more disconnected. Even the line right here, it's not connected well. For those little precise details, you have to use the clone stamp tool. Let's pick the clone stamp tool. Now, let's create a new layer, let's not forget that. And hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample. If you continue it, the line would go haywire some other place. We want to rotate the line. So how do we do that? First, let's take a sample right here. Now we are seeing a preview. So how do we rotate it? By holding the Alt or Option, Shift and the angle bracket keys. See, it's rotating. The right angle bracket key rotates it clockwise and the left one rotates it anti-clockwise. This much is fine. Now just simply align it, make the brush a little smaller and paint. There you go, it's continued. Let's take a sample of this and maybe rotate it a little bit to the right and paint. And that's how you can continue these lines. Simply take a sample of this one as well and rotate it and simply paint. Similarly, you can continue the line. So here's the before, there was no line. Here's the after, we are continuing the line. Now that the line is connected, there will be a lot of odd things here. So select the remove tool. If you see odd things, make sure sample all layers is checked. Just paint a little bit here and there to fix that, and there you go. No matter how much generative AI develops, we still need the brush tool. No matter how much automatic selection techniques like select subject get better, we still need the pen tool. No matter how good your washing machine is, some persistent dirt we have to scrub with our hands. Similarly, when you want to take things in your hands, Clone Stamp tool gives you that option. And that is why it is irreplaceable. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.